I have shown you how to download or I have given you a file <clears throat> called digitalpaintingbrushes.abr. This is a set of brushes designed entirely for digital painting. What I'm about to show you is one of the most important things that you can learn in Photoshop, which is how to download and install custom brushes. It's what makes a good graphic designer a great graphic designer. So let's open up our file in Photoshop. Here it is from last time. And let's import these brushes. What you want to do is first select the brush tool. And the brush tool is over here on the left side of your screen, and it looks like a paintbrush. Okay. Once you click on the brush tool, you'll see that the top section of Photoshop changes. What I want you to look for is where the size is. Mine right now is a 500 size brush. I have no idea what yours will be, but it will be right here. And there'll be a little drop down arrow. I want you to go ahead and click that. We can expand this. If you look at the bottom right of your drop down arrow, you'll see like a diagonal three slashes. If you click and drag that, that can make that bigger or smaller. Make it pretty big. We wanna see what we're doing here. And you'll notice a couple folders. I think you might have one more than mine anyway, but you'll definitely have general brushes. And under there, you'll see things like soft round or hard round brushes and with different like kind of opacities and pressures and all that good stuff. We can collapse that folder right there. We want to import a new one. If you look at this cog wheel right here, I think there is in an import setting. Yes. So right here, cog wheel in the top right of this little pop up window. And then you're going to look for import brushes right here where I am. So go ahead and click import brushes. That will bring us to something kind of like this. Again, you want to look for desktop because we saved that .abr file on the desktop. There it is, digitalpaintingbrushes.abr. Click on it, and then in the bottom right, you're going to see open right here. So I'll hit that. And then you'll see a folder appear right there called digital painting brushes. We can expand that, and then you're going to see paintable, brush, uh, paintable basic brushes and tools. We're going to have to expand that again. Sorry about putting two folders in there. The one that you're gonna be looking for is all the way down here at the bottom called smudge tool right there. So if you click on that or double click it, your window will close. In addition to that, you'll notice that your tool automatically changes to the smudge tool, which kind of looks like a pointy finger. It's perfect. It's what we need for the next, I don't know, five hours of this project. Before we start smudging, we need to get a layer set up for it. Cutout is not what we want. In fact, Cutout has this little collapsible guy right here. If you look over where Cutout layer is, you can hit that, and you'll see that the filter thing gets hidden by it. That's awesome. Probably tired of doing this by now, but I want you to duplicate this layer. So click and drag it to the new layer icon, and you will see Cutout copy. Okay. First things first, let's eyeball out Cutout. We don't need that anymore. Cutout copy, you can double click on the text. I want you to call this Smudge. S-M-U-D-G-E, and then hit the return key. So one more thing that we need to do because it's currently not editable. If you look on the, uh, I want you to select the actual image, not the layer mask. Again, you can tell because that box around it right there has this icon, it's a smart image. Yours might not actually have this, um, but I would be willing to bet like about half or more of the class has it. We gotta get rid of it. So to do that, right click or two finger click on the image and you're going, or actually, ooh, I lied, not on the image. I want you to be kind of over here to the right of the word smudge, then two finger click on the layer you'll get a huge list of options. One that you're looking for is right here called convert to layers. So go ahead and click convert to layers. Um, this might pop up. Do you want to retain transformations? Yes, you do. Then you will see that that little icon goes away. We're good to go from here on out. So now we want to smudge. Uh, how do we do that? I would recommend that you zoom in and there are three ways to zoom. I'm gonna show you the worst, show you the wonky one, and then I'll show you the best one. The worst one is the zoom tool. It is down here in the bottom. Um, it looks like a magnifying glass. And uh, then there's a plus and minus up here in the top of the screen. The plus, when you click, will zoom you in. You switch over to the minus up here in the top left, and then you click, it will zoom you out. It's just weird to go to that tool. You can pinch and pull on the trackpad like you would like a touch screen. But man, that can get really laggy sometimes. I don't recommend it. I've legitimately seen good computers freeze over this. I wouldn't mess around with it. The best one is if you hold down the command key on your keyboard, it's to the left or right of your spacebar. There's two of them. While you have the command key held down, if you hit the minus key, each time you tap it, it will zoom you out. While still holding command, if you hit the plus key, it will zoom you in. Let's say I zoom in pretty far right here to like his beard or goatee but I want to move up to his eyeballs. 
without clicking two fingers, I just light, gently place two fingers on the trackpad, I can actually swipe around and it will move things around. So in my opinion, it's the best and fastest way to do it. All right, if you went ahead and selected the zoom tool, we gotta get back to the smudge tool. It is right here. Um, it doesn't have a hotkey, so you have to like physically click on it. Also, double check, it might be under the blur tool. It might You might see a little water droplet here. We do uh, two finger click that and choose smudge tool. I wanna make sure that we have the right brush selected again. So I went down up into here, there it is, smudge tool, good. You probably won't have to do that if you did that before, but let's actually recap that real quick. Once you have the smudge tool selected, again over here, go up here, you'll see this change, drop down arrow, click that. Let me uh, collapse everything. Here are your folders. Go into digital painting brushes, go into uh, paintable basic brushes, and go all the way down, and you'll see smudge tool. Double click that. Okay size of the brush tool it's the same i think we touched base on this for the layer mask stuff right or no the quick selection the left bracket every time you tap it your brush tool will get smaller the right bracket every time you tap it your brush tool will get bigger there is a much lamer way to change this if you want to be lame you can go up into here and you'll see it says size right here um you can slide that slider the reason why it's lame i don't know how big 63 pixels is until i like click off go back into here and i'm like oh maybe i wanted it to be bigger right so just use these the left and right bracket and you're good to go all right uh how to smudge ideally you want your brush size to be relative size to the area that you're working with and you want to smudge two colors next to each other so i have this darker shade of brown with this tan right here and i'm simply just going to click and drag around it if I were to get into a really detailed area, like his eyeball, I'm gonna decrease the brush size. I'm gonna do the same thing. Again, you're looking to smudge by just clicking and dragging around from one section to the other. The bigger the brush size is, the bigger the smudge job will be. The smaller the brush is, the more detailed it is. So if you get too small, you won't even notice a change. So you kind of want to find that happy medium of where it's like nice detail, but it's also still noticeable, right? When you're in a really, really big area down here, you might as well just make it really big, your, your brush size, and then just go go for it. Um, what you can do then too, is you can then decrease, and then do a little bit of work like that, you know? Um, you wanna hit up all areas, all areas where you see like flat colors from, that change from one to the other, and you just wanna brush right over them. One big tip with this is if, um, I would click and hold with one index finger and actually draw around with the other. So I'm right here, I'm right-handed. I'm gonna click and hold down with my left index finger. And then with my right index finger, I'm gonna move around with my cursor. And then that way you can, it's, it's just a lot easier to draw. You can periodically let go obviously when you have to hop from like one area to the next. And then change your brush size too, as you see fit. Um, it's up to you really, you can really get you know, more detailed or less detailed with this, but in no time, this should start to look much, <clears throat> much more like an actual painting. Hair will probably take a little bit more work to do than other parts. Um, if you go too fast on hair, it doesn't look that good. So you might have to get detailed on hair. I think it's time well spent. So um, by the time that you're done smudging, let me go back to mine. I started here with this cutout and I ended this like that. So let me zoom in on a part and then we'll show you the difference. Right there, his, his, his mouth. This is what it looked like originally. That is what it looked like after I was done smudging. That is what you're going for. Good luck. Uh, in the next video, we're gonna jump in with being done with smudging. So I will not be playing videos for a little bit of time. All right.